Welcome to today's podcast. We're covering jellyfish stings, how they happen, effective treatments, and debunking common myths. Stay tuned for essential tips, whether you're at the beach or in the clinic. Okay, so picture this. You're at the beach, sun's out having a great time, you wade into the water, and bam, it feels like someone just jagged you with something. You don't even see what did it. But deep down, you know, it was probably a jellyfish. Not mm -hmm. the best way to start a beach day, right? <laughs> so today we are diving deep into the world of jellyfish stings. And we're going way beyond basic first aid here, right? Yeah. We'll uncover the science behind these stings, bust some common myths about treating them, and hopefully by the end of this you'll be able to impress your friends with how much you know about jellyfish exactly we've got a stack of articles you sent in and honestly just skimming through them i learned some crazy things like did you know that some jellyfish venom can actually mess with your cells so badly they forget how to function that's wild yeah it's true some of those toxins are incredibly complex yeah but before we get into that really wild stuff we got to talk about the basics what even is a jellyfish right we all think we know it's that kind of wobbly see-through thing that stings you when you're in the ocean but i'm sure there's got to be more to it than that oh definitely for starters, jellyfish are invertebrates, meaning they don't have backbones. And despite the name, they're not actually fish. Think of them more like distant cousins of corals and anemones. Okay, so not a fish. Got it. But what about those stinging tentacles? Those seem like a jellyfish trademark. Absolutely. And to understand those, you got to picture that classic jellyfish shape, that bell-shaped body with those long tentacles trailing behind. That's actually called the medusa stage of their life cycle. And those tentacles are covered in these specialized stinging cells called nematocysts. Imagine them like tiny little harpoons that inject venom into anything that touches them. Wait, so it's not just the tentacle itself that stings, it's injecting you with something. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And here's where it gets interesting. That venom, it can be totally different depending on what kind of jellyfish you're dealing with. Some just cause a little irritation. Mm -hmm. Others, well, let's just say you don't want to mess with those like the box jellyfish, for example. Mm -hmm. Their venom is so strong, it can cause so much pain that people go into shock and drown before they can even make it back to shore. Wow, okay, I'm already getting chills and we're just getting started. So you mentioned different species. How many different types of jellyfish are we talking about here and do I need to be worried about all of them? Thankfully, no. There are thousands of jellyfish species out there, but only a small percentage are actually dangerous to humans. It's kind of like if you had a barrel full of apples, most of them are fine, maybe a little bruised, but then you get a few bad apples mixed in. Okay, that's reassuring. So let's talk about those bad apples for a minute. If we're going to be jellyfish aware, we need to know who the worst offenders are. Absolutely. Let's start with the one we already touched on. The infamous box jellyfish. They're found in the warm waters of the Pacific and Indian Oceans, and those are the ones you hear horror stories about. Yeah, those are definitely at the top of my avoid-at-all-costs list now. Yeah. What else is out there? Well, there's the Portuguese man of war. And this is where things get interesting. It's not actually a jellyfish. It's a colony of organisms all working together. But it looks like a jellyfish has those trailing tentacles and a seriously painful sting. You'll find them in warmer waters too, but they're even more widespread than the box jellyfish. Okay, so a jellyfish imposter, but with just as much sting. I'm sensing a theme here. Warmer waters, more danger. Generally speaking, yes, but there are a couple of culprits you might encounter in both warm and cool waters, like the sea nettle and the lion's mane jellyfish. Lion's mane, as in the biggest jellyfish in the world. That's the one. Their stings can be pretty bad, but luckily they're not usually life-threatening. Okay, good to know. But let's get into the science behind these stings. How do those nematocysts, those tiny harpoons you mentioned, actually work? What's happening at a microscopic level that causes that instant burning pain? It's actually a really amazing process, and it happens so fast. So remember those nematocysts we were talking about? Mm. When something brushes against a tentacle boom, those things fire, injecting venom right into the skin. Like some kind of biological booby trap. Exactly. And that venom is meant to paralyze their prey. But the effects it can have on us humans, that's where it gets really interesting. Some jellyfish venoms have these things called neurotoxins, which basically mess with your nerves. So it's not just about the pain then? Oh no, we're talking potential muscle spasms, yeah. paralysis, even trouble breathing in some cases. Yeah. And then you've got the cardiotoxic effects. Cardiotoxic, meaning it affects your heart. You got it. Some jellyfish venoms can mess with your heart rate and in the worst cases could even stop your heart completely. Okay, things just got real. So most stings are just a temporary annoyance, but there's a chance they could become really serious. 
What should people be watching out for? When is it more than just a walk it off situation? Good question. While most things just cause some pain, redness, maybe some welts, there are definitely some warning signs. Like if you have really intense pain and it starts spreading out from the saying, that's one to watch out for. Also things like muscle cramps, nausea, vomiting, those are signs your body's having a stronger reaction to the venom. And those symptoms would start pretty quickly, right? You wouldn't be feeling those hours later, would you? No, you'd know pretty soon. Headaches, dizziness, confusion, those are not good signs either. They could mean those neurotoxins are at work. And of course, the really serious ones, trouble breathing and chest pain. If you see those, get medical help right away. Knowing the difference between a normal sting and a really bad one could be critical. Okay, so say the worst happens, someone's showing those really bad symptoms. What do we do while we're waiting for the paramedics to get there? First things first, get the person out of the water. That's priority number one. You don't want them getting stung again. And panicking in the water can be dangerous on its own. Makes sense. Now I gotta ask about this one. We've all heard the stories, the supposed cure for jellyfish stings. Does yeah. peeing on it actually work? Let's just say there are way better and less, well, awkward ways to deal with the sting. Oh, okay, that's what I was hoping you'd say. So what does work? Our sources mentioned something about removing the tentacles. Yes. If there are any tentacles stuck to the skin, carefully remove them. But don't just try to brush them off. That could actually make things worse. You could trigger even more stinging cells. Tweezers are best, or you can use a gloved hand. And I mean gloved, you don't want to end up stinging yourself too. Right, safety first. So the tentacles are off? Mm. What about cleaning the area? I would think you'd want to get as much of the venom off as possible. What's the best way to do that? That's where a lot of people mess up. It seems like common sense to use fresh water, right? But here's the thing, fresh water can actually make the stinging worse. Wait, really? Why is that? It all goes back to those pneumatocysts. Remember how I said they're like tiny little harpoons? Right. Well, they're super sensitive to changes in salt concentration. Fresh water has way less salt than seawater. So when it hits those stinging cells, it can actually make them fire and release more venom. So you're basically adding insult to injury. Exactly. Yeah. The best thing to rinse a jellyfish sting with is actually more seawater. It might seem kind of weird, but it's the safest way to get rid of any leftover tentacles and venom without making the sting even worse. Okay, seawater rinse, got it. This is why I love these deem dives. You totally just busted a myth I've believed for years. What about pain relief? What actually works? Ice packs can definitely help with the inflammation and pain, but one of the most effective and surprisingly lesser known treatments is hot water immersion. Hot water, really? I always thought that would just make it hurt more. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but stick with me. Immersing the sting in hot but not scalding water. Think somewhere between 104 and 113 degrees Fahrenheit for about 20 to 45 minutes can actually break down the venom proteins. So the heat neutralizes the venom. Exactly. And studies have actually shown that it can be even more effective than ice packs for some types of jellyfish stings. Now, when it comes to those nasty tropical stings, like from the box jellyfish or the Portuguese man of war, our sources mentioned vinegar. Right. You said earlier that vinegar could actually make some stings worse. So now I'm kind of unsure about it. And you're right to be cautious. With suspected tropical stings, vinegar is often recommended as a first step, even before you remove any tentacles. The idea is that it neutralizes the venom in those undischarged stinging cells, the ones that haven't fired yet. But, and this is really important, vinegar can make stings from certain species, like the blue bottle, much worse. And those are more common in some areas that aren't tropical. Okay, so it's not a one-size-fits-all solution. Exactly. It's all about being cautious. And if you're ever unsure, it's always best to play it safe. If you don't know what kind of jellyfish caused the sting, or if you see any of those really serious symptoms we talked about, go get medical help. Because even with the right first aid, some stings just need a professional. Absolutely. Yeah. It's always better to be safe than sorry. Speaking of being safe, there's actually a lot you can do to avoid getting stung in the first place. So we've talked about how to spot those dangerous jellyfish, the science behind their stings, and even busted some first aid myths. Yeah, we've definitely gone beyond just the basics. We have. But before we wrap up this deep dive into jellyfish stings, our outline mentions something about prevention. Right. Because as important as it is to know how to treat a sting, avoiding one altogether is even better. Exactly. And besides the obvious don't swim during jellyfish season advice, what are some things people can do to stay safe? Well, first off, pay attention to those warning signs on beaches. I know they can seem like overkill sometimes, but they're there for a reason. They're like a little heads up from the jellyfish letting you know, hey, we're out here. Exactly. 
and wearing protective clothing can be really helpful if you're swimming in an area known for jellyfish. A wetsuit is ideal, of course. Yeah. But even something like a Leica rash guard can give you a little bit of a barrier. And don't forget about your feet. Stepping on a jellyfish is definitely not a fun experience. No, it's not. <laughs> Waterproof shoes are key for preventing those stings that can happen when you're wading in shallow water. And if you're swimming somewhere with lifeguards, don't be afraid to ask them about jellyfish. They're a great resource for local information, and they can tell you if there have been a lot of sightings recently. Great tips. I have to say, I've learned so much from this deep dive. It's amazing how much there is to know about something like a jellyfish sting. It's really fascinating to me that these creatures... As much as we might want to avoid being stung by them, they play a vital role in the ocean's ecosystem. That's a really good point. We've been so focused on the sting part of jellyfish, we haven't even talked about their place in the bigger picture. And that's where things get even more interesting. They might be pretty simple creatures, but they're a crucial part of this complex web of life in the ocean. So there's definitely more to them than meets the eye. What's something our listeners could check out if they want to learn more about the ecological role of jellyfish? Here's something to think about. What if I told you that jellyfish could actually be a sign of a changing ocean? What does that make you think about? Ooh, that's a great one to leave everyone with. A little food for thought. Well, there you have it, folks. We've gone from basic beach safety to a whole new appreciation for the world of jellyfish. We've busted some myths, uncovered some surprising science, and hopefully given you the knowledge you need to stay safe out there. And hey, maybe you can even impress your friends with your new jellyfish knowledge at the beach. And remember, those warning signs are your friends. Oh. Until next time, happy swimming. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comments section.